Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. So today's episode is quite different than usual. So if you have tuned in for the very first time expecting an art podcast, then this might not be the one to start with. We do talk about lots of art related things, but in today's episode, we invited our listeners to ask us anything. We've been waffling on in your ears for such a long time now. We thought as a Christmas special episode, we'd give you the opportunity to get to know us a little bit better. Now, originally, this was meant to be one episode, but in true Tara and Sandra style, we did an awful lot of waffling and we went over by a whole hour. So we decided to make this into two special Christmas episodes. Like I said, it's very different than our usual podcast, but we hope you really enjoy it. Before we start, I just want to say, well, we both want to say a huge thank you to Kathy Farrell and Jackie Paulewski for supporting us on Kofi. It really does help us to continue what we do and it shows that you enjoy it too. Yeah, and we just want to remind you of the challenges that we've got coming up next year. So that's for January and that is Quick Kit January, which is to take an abstract photo every day throughout the month. We've got Aqua January, which is to create a piece of work using watercolour every day. We've got Art Journal January, and that's to create an illustrated page every day throughout the month. That seemed really popular last year. And then we've also got our Kick Time Challenge, which is one where you have one prompt and you can use that for any type of creativity you like. And January's prompt is Emerge. So if you want to find out more details about any of those challenges, if you just go over to our website at kickingthecreatives.com and there's loads more information over there. And we also um, got some really lovely podcast reviews recently as well. And uh, we got one titled Favourite Podcast. (laughs) And uh, this is by Maz Kelly. And she says, I'm really sad. Over the last couple of months, I've binge listened to all 46 episodes, which now means I'm going to have to wait two whole weeks for each one. How will I cope? (laughs) What will I listen to now? How will I do my housework without Tara and Sandra to keep me entertained? It's a problem. In all seriousness, though, I love this podcast. Sandra and Tara are a delight to listen to. Informative and often hilarious, they are the perfect double act to Chronicles of Narnia. Their interviews with various artists from different fields are always extremely interesting. But my favourite episodes are when it's just Sandra and Tara having a chat about art, what they've been up to and whatever the theme for that week is. If you're at all interested in doing art, whatever form, I'd highly recommend this podcast both to the hobby and professional artist. Like I said, I love it. Maybe I'll just have to start again from the beginning. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? Can you imagine listening to us forty-six oh, no. times back to back? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, maybe we're going to be the new Ant and Deck. What do you think? Oh, you never know. <laughs> No, that was really nice to read, though. Thank you so much, Maz. We really appreciate it. Yeah, that did it. make us smile, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and I've got another one from Nick Tate West. And Nick, Nick's in our group. And she says, Upbeat, lively and creative podcast. I look forward to each episode and the two hosts are funny together. I don't know what they mean, do you? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no. Anyway, so we today, I mean, we normally sort of ask each other what's new and have a little chat first, don't we? But we're going to get straight on to the questions that you've asked us today. And the first one is from Rebecca Reynolds. So she says, I currently use acrylic paints, but I'm thinking of trying oils. I know they're not easier to use, but do they blend colours better and do they give a better finish? I'm thinking for portraits. So... I suppose, shall I start this one? Well, that's totally for you because I don't use oil, so I have no Mm. idea. Mm. Okay, well, there's pros and cons to both. So acrylics obviously dry a lot quicker, which is really great in some respects, but not so great when you're trying to blend um, unless you use some kind of slow retardant um, to slow down the drying time. Do you know, do you remember I told you about John Myatt? Do you know John Myatt, the one that went to prison for art forgery? 
Yeah, with the KY jelly. Yeah, he uses KY yeah. jelly. <laughs> and, and that is basically a saline jelly and it's supposedly a lot cheaper and it does the same job. Don't quote me on that. I don't know, but that's what he does. Um, personally, I love oils, obviously. I use oils. Um, I've used acrylics before, but I love the fact that you can blend oils all day long, which is great when you're veering perhaps more towards realism. Um, you can use mediums to speed up the drying process as well, but there is no doubt they, they are definitely messier to use and much harder to clean up afterwards. <laughs> so I, I know that I've been... I, did I say... I thought, said last week on the podcast my friend has been painting with me in my studio recently and she uses acrylics and I'm quite envious because what she does is when she finishes she takes her apron off she runs her brushes under the tap and off she goes and that's that and with me of course I'm having to you know cleaning oil brushes is just not that simple <laughs> it's a bit of a chore to be honest um, but I do, I prefer the finish of an oil painting, I think. But it's all down to personal taste at the end of the day. My suggestion would be to experiment, really. What about, I know in the past you've tried the water-based oils. Now, what sort of finish do they give, do you know, compared to standard oils? Some people love them. I don't. I don't like them at all. I tried them. I actually ended up giving mine away. They... <sighs> I mean, obviously, I only tried one brand. I don't know whether it's Van Gogh or something. I don't know. But um, I found them kind of chalky. They didn't have that kind of glowing finish, if you know what I mean. They seemed a bit, almost like a bit poster paintish. <laughs> it was really odd. I, d I didn't get on with them at all. But then I know there are lots of artists out there that really do love them. I love the idea of, of them. But they just don't have that same kind of enamel-like finish that, that oils do. And I, and I think that's because, you know, you're not working with the medium. I mean, the medium I use, I, I create my own out of um, oil and, and, and you can choose which oil it is depending on how what finish you like and how you want it to dry. With those paints, the finish is what it is. So, yeah. So should we do the next one? It's John Monroe, actually. He's got quite a few questions and he says, 10 questions that require an answer in 10 words or less. Well, John, there's absolutely no chance that it's going to happen. <laughs> this is a podcast. We like to talk. OK, so forget the 10 words or less. I definitely can't do it. And there's absolutely no way Sandra can do that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I've completely ignored that bit. So the first question is favourite artist deliberately left vague, he said. So shall I, shall I start off with that? Yeah, one? yeah. Well, I couldn't pick one. So... And to be honest, I haven't got a favourite, favourite artist. It's I tend to just look at stuff, like it. I might not even know who it's by. But as you know, I do like John Bergman's doodles. <laughs> and then I do, do really like... I seem to like people who do abstract faces. Definitely got that thing at the moment. I think it's because I'm trying to find a style that's kind of a, an abstracty face sort of style so i'm really liking at the moment a woman called christina romeo and you'll find her on instagram and also deb weirs who we've had on the podcast so check out that podcast if you haven't as well and she does kind of what do you say they're abstract faces aren't they but i guess they're almost they're kind of tribal as well yeah i would say yeah but I, yeah i love what she does so definitely those well you've gone kind of ultra modern and I kind of, I'm going to go the other way because I I couldn't possibly choose out of artists that are out there today. There's so many that I follow and I love. Um, and if I was going to talk about sketching, you know, where do I start? <laughs> but if you're looking at actual, um, I don't know, painters from the past maybe or even, well, I mean, there's Jack Vetriano. He, he's obviously still alive and well today. Um, but I love his stuff. But it's kind of more like a 40s style painting, which is really weird, isn't it? Because that's not what I do. What does he paint? Well, well, just sort of that, really. He's a figurative painter. Figurative, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it's kind of like an old-fashioned style. I really like it. And... I mean, one of my favourite paintings is by Edward Hopper and that's called Nighthawks. And I don't know, it's something about that light and dark 
if you look it up, it's like um, a nighttime painting of a cafe and it's dark outside and light inside and there's just when I look at that painting it just makes me wonder you know who's who's in there that shouldn't be and who are they meeting and it's just got that I don't know it just makes you ask questions which I love but it's got a similar kind of um feel to the what to what Jack Vetriano does I think that kind of older style stuff so I really like that but I haven't, like you, I haven't got a favourite artist. And if I was to look at artists today, I'd, I'd be getting out a scroll right now <laughs> and reading from that. Not doing very well with ten words or less, are we? No. <laughs> that was completely out the window, wasn't it? Yeah. Since he wrote it. Yeah. But surely Danny Gregory's got to be up there. Danny Gregory, I absolutely love. And yes, he would be um, one of my favourites. Kosha Kuna as well. I love her stuff. Um so yeah, so that's what I decided to go kind of towards oh. the painting, maybe because you were going towards the drawing. So you didn't know I was going to go through the towards the drawing. No, no, but I, we're, I mean I'm ad libbing. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't written any notes. Oh, really. right, okay. Uh, we we've were... done we've done this a very different way than normal. We didn't actually look at these questions until it was yesterday, but it's only because we well, basically I wanted to make sure we had some questions. Can you imagine? We opened it up and like no one had asked us anything. <laughs> that would have been really sad. And also just to make sure you know we kind of knew a little bit roughly what we were going to be asked, just in case something needed a bit of thought but normally we'll kind of write notes won't we but today I've uh, you know just been very brief so yeah well I cheated and I have written a few notes so (gasps) I know (laughs) (laughs) that is cheating if I waffle a lot today and and keep going wrong and tripping over my words we'll know why it's because I'm not reading there'll be nothing new will it (laughs) nothing new anyway next one favorite book Sandra well, I have... Paul bought me a Kindle this year, and I always said, I love books that you can smell and you can hold and you can touch. But actually, I must say, since he bought my Kindle, I think I've read about 50 books. It's unbelievable how much I read now. And I think it's because when I go to bed... When you have a, a paper book, you have to sort of sit up with your knees up and your your reading glasses on and your you know your book on your lap and you're reading and you have to have the light on but with your kindle you can kind of lay down on your side cuddle up in in bed to your pillow and then just read it and you can just read for hours like that it's great so talk about veer off the point you see i told you <laughs> <laughs> i told you i need notes to keep me i just need <laughs> i need notes to sort of keep keep me from talking too much but yeah so since i bought my kindle i read a lot but I love books that make me laugh, which is really weird because most of the books I read at the moment seem to be murder mysteries. But I think the first book I ever loved was Bridget Jones's Diary. When that first came out, I really loved it. I think most women can relate to that. I loved that. More recently, I read a book called um, This Is Gonna Hurt by Adam Kay. That was absolutely hysterical. I mean, it made me laugh out loud all the time. Paul kept saying, what are you laughing at? So and what, then, what was it about? <clears throat> well... Is it, it fiction? N- n- well, no, it's actually a, a written by a guy called Adam Kay who was a... He trained to be a doctor and he was a, a doctor for seven years. He trained for seven years and he actually did the job for seven years. And he... It's all based on his... They were encouraged to write a daily journal when they were, do, you know, in their junior doctor sort of stage. And it's basically going back to his journal and writing about his day. But he was a obstetrician slash gynecology sort of doctor. So you can imagine. Yeah, yeah the writing the stories. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of it is in the labour ward. <laughs> oh. Probably more suited to women than men, really, because they relate to it more. But I've got to say, if you are pregnant um, or you plan a family anytime soon... Do not read this book until after you've had the baby. (laughs) Because you will be scared stiff. (laughs) But if you've had a baby, then please read the book. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I loved A Tiny Bit Marvellous by Dawn French. That's another one I really loved. And I was was hooked on the first, probably the first paragraph of that page because it was just so funny. I, I kind of feel like I should be saying... Pride and Prejudice oh. by Jane Austen and being all cultural, but I'd be completely lying, I'm afraid. Yeah, but we're not cultural, are we? Come on. No. no. 
We're not, not are we? Really. Do you read? I've never really heard you talk about books. Do you read? Yes, a lot? I, I can. I can read. Yes. Can you? Uh, oh, yes. What Vogue? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Um, so I didn't know if we were going art books or sort of you know reading reading books so i put an art book one of my favorite art books is street sketchbook by tristan manko and as it says basically this is all about street artists but it's what they actually do in their sketchbook rather than on walls and outside and i just absolutely love it if you just want pages and pages of sketchbook inspiration this is your thing love it um but books wise now this is going to sound really like a quite a weird one um but the funniest book i ever read was a biography of blenda blethin do you remember the actress blenda blethin i've never even heard of her really and she used to be in this uh, old comedy old british comedy that i can't remember what it is but now she's in this police series i still can't remember what that's called either <laughs> it's, it's really useful isn't it but the book's called mixed fancies and it, she's basically an actress but she didn't become an actress like when she was really young i can't remember what age but it was like when she was in the 30s or 40s but it is the funniest book i've ever read she just tells some stories uh, you know of things that happened and everything and it's absolutely amazing so yeah quite a weird one because she wasn't even my favorite actress you know she wasn't something and i just just read and i thought oh that sounds really good and it was brilliant but i really like sci-fi oh really so i'm a little bit of a geek but i tend to like the young adult sci-fi so i like something aimed for a 14 year old girl <laughs> <laughs> So I love stuff like Divergent. I've never yeah. heard of any of this. Even though, I mean, there's a film, Divergent. You're not no. saying you heard of it. I absolutely love the first two books. So that I didn't like the last one. And then there's a book called The Girl with All the Gifts. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. And that was basically a, a kind of about child zombies. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's absolutely brilliant. If you haven't read that one and you like kind of sci fi kind of stuff and dystopian, you know, fiction, fantastic. Sorry, I was yawning. No! <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're so mean! <laughs> oh, you see, isn't it funny? I couldn't, I couldn't read that. I couldn't do any of that. But then. No, I don't. See, I wouldn't read a, a murder. No. Even though these are quite dark, some of these, yeah. but I wouldn't read the murder. I like the. I don't, I don't like gore. I can't be doing if it's too, if it's too um, graphic. I can't yeah. read it at all. I'm really sensitive like that, and I, you know. But um, I like reading about. I like the Who Done It's. Oh right. So no, some, somebody was found. Somebody was found dead at the bottom of the stairs. But you don't actually. You don't sort of get the graphic detail of how it happened or anything like that. You just like it's the who in this house did this sort of thing. I love all that. <laughs> yeah. What about art book? Anyway, you haven't said your favourite art book. Art book. <sighs> Well, it's going to be answer. it's going to be a Danny Gregory, isn't it? Yeah, I just don't know what it is about his stuff. I don't know what it is about his stuff. I just think it's um, a real, I guess. Maybe there's nothing nothing pretentious about what he does. It's all just real, and I love that about him. I love the fact that his books, when you look at them on the cover, they they're like. You know, like you're a child in a sweet shop and you see brightly coloured things with fun, you know, just everything looks fun. So you want to pick them out. I suppose it's like if you look at my bookcase, you'd think it was for children because his all his books are just so inviting and like that colourful. Just love it. So, yeah, it's uplifting, I think. That's the word. OK, so we've got favourite city next. What's your favourite city? Well, that depends, doesn't it? Where? I mean... As in, what, in this country, do you think? Because I, I, I think I'm going to have to say in this country, really, because I'm not sure I've been to many cities. <laughs> I've been to Venice. I've been to Venice, but I was too young to appreciate Venice. I was 14, and at that, that age, I was, you know, it was one of those, oh, this is sightseeing, where's the nearest beach? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas now, if I went to Venice, I'd be like, oh, you know, let's go look You'd at this. You'd be drawing, wouldn't you, painting. Yeah, and, yeah. absolutely. But as a 14-year-old, you don't appreciate things like no, that. No, you don't. Paris, and that was okay. Uh, personally, I think the Eiffel Tower... God, I hope we've got no French people listening. <laughs> but it kind of reminds me of a big pylon. Yeah, I guess it is a bit. Yeah. Which is which is basically everything I don't like about the British countryside is when it's ruined by a pylon in the middle of it. It's like, oh... Although the French just... pylons, saying that, 
when when we went to France, they've got those amazing pylons that look like these big tall cats. Oh really? And if you've ever been, you'll know what I mean. They have like they kind of go upwards, but then they have these like two points at the top. And I I keep trying to get a photo, and it's always when we're in the car and we're moving because mm. I think, oh, that would be so good to draw on and make into this electric cat. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> electric cat. I I am um, I love the look of the Eiffel Tower when it's lit up at night though. That's amazing. But say so, uh, we only really sort of drove through it. We didn't sort of stop there. Um so I can't really comment too much on on anything really abroad because to be honest when we go away on holiday we tend to go for a relaxing chill out beach holiday to be honest that's what we like and we like scuba diving and all that you see so we sort of aim for that rather than city visits but in this country um well recently you might have heard me talk about it but i went to oxford and the old part of oxford is absolutely stunning absolutely beautiful especially if you want to go and draw buildings um and also bath and i think actually out of the two of them i would say bath just about topped oxford mainly because Everything about Bath was built the same, and it's all in—it's like in the middle of a countryside. So you've got every, every building is framed by a backdrop of trees and, and valleys and hills, which is gorgeous. Whereas Oxford's very much a city. So yeah, I love those two. Anyone, like I say, who likes drawing buildings, definitely go to either one of those places if you ever get a chance, because they're fantastic. What about you? Well, I really like Cambridge, which we've been to a few times. I've never been. Basically, beautiful architecture, probably like Oxford and Bath again. Just mm. like, it's so good, and of course they don't have too many cars in bits of it, you know, because they keep keep cars out a lot more. A lot of cyclists, mm. um, and also in Cambridge, there's so many bookshops, and it's like you know, like you can go in a, a bookshop and it's just like loads and loads of art books. Oh, really? I haven't been, yeah, haven't been for ages, but I hopefully haven't shut any of them down. But you'd go in and. You know, like there might be a whole floor almost of kind of art and, and, and creative type of books, which is just just amazing because you just don't get that now, do you? And what are the buildings like? Is it like Oxford in the way it's built? Like I've never been sandstone? to Oxford. Is it never kind of like to... that yellow sort of sandstone building? Right, That's what I, I love. It's a mix, but like because you've got old universities yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And yeah. Just, just really nice. But I mean, I also like parts of London. So... Covent Garden's just amazing, isn't it? It's just that that feel, I think, of Covent mm. Garden sitting there. Um, and do you know what? Because I I'm much more of a country person than yeah. a city. Me too. But I remember going to Brussels, and it it wasn't so much that I loved Brussels. It was that we went to this concert there. Now this sound really funny. We went to see, and we didn't really know of her at the time. Narina Palo, have you heard of her? No. Well, we were going for, for a long weekend, so I just looked to see if there was anything on, and there was this concert with Narina Palo, who actually had a number one, I think, around the same time, but she was doing this really small gig, and we just went, and it was sat in this... It was almost like, you know, you get these kids' things where it's almost like sort of steps down, and there's a stage in the middle, so yeah. you're sitting on a step. Yeah. It was like that, and so there can't have been more than, say, 100 people sitting on the steps around her, sitting with a piano and a guitar. So you're sitting maybe, you know, six metres, eight metres from her. Oh, wow. Just amazing. And it was one of those ones where, you know, it's like that sort of atmosphere moment, if that makes sense. Mm, you know, mm. you get those sort of certain times that just stick in your head. So, yeah, not so much Brussels, but that memory of being in Brussels, I guess. Never no. been. I remember it being really expensive for beer, so you probably wouldn't want to go. <laughs> no, that's definitely no good for me then. <laughs> so the next question John asks is, what is the greatest influence in your life? So what is the great greatest influence in your life? What or who, I guess? Yeah, see, I read that as who. Yeah, I suppose I ha- Yeah, I suppose I do, really. Hmm. Oh, are you asking me? Yeah. Well, oh, no, asking jo- you. John's, a- John's asking you. <laughs> Oh, we I'll answer it first if you like. Okay. Oh, I don't mind. I'll go for it. You so go first. my par- my partner is probably a big influence in my life because I see him most. I guess family and artistically and creative. Why you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very flattering. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Jesus, that's going to your head now, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to make me edit it out, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Okay, so so how does your how does Kevin influence you then? Well, because he's he's one of those people that if I'm down, I guess he'll always encourage me to do anything. So he influences me by being so positive. Yeah, that you know you can do anything, and I don't know, he's just so good like that. Yeah, I think it's it's almost inevitable, isn't it? The person you spend most of your time with are gonna have some sort of influence. I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think with Paul, he he is one of these people that will go at anything like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> <laughs> so he, so basically, he he is a just take the leap kind of person, and I'm I air more on the side of caution a little bit, but I think where it's good is that he we've kind of met in the middle, so. Which is a good thing, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm a lot braver and he's a little bit less likely to find himself in <laughs> like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so that's quite good. And he's he's such a positive person. Sometimes it's irritating how positive <laughs> he is. Like, he'll get up in the morning on a Sunday and whereas I think, oh, Sunday, it's a lion day. And there's no way I can lie in because I can hear him jet washing the car outside. Oh. He'd be cleaning out the gutters. He'd have, you know, done some leaf blowing, and it's like half past seven in the morning. So oh. I lay there feeling really guilty. <laughs> so, and he'll get up, and I can hear him singing at the top of his voice something really irritating. I'm like, why are you in such a good mood? It's, I've always been a person that I generally don't really function before ten, which is probably explains a lot because we. <laughs> We, we do the podcast at eight. about eight in the morning. <laughs> Generally, I don't speak to anyone before about ten in the morning. So you're honoured. <laughs> um, so family, yeah, I think I think it's obvious that they're always going to be an influence, aren't they? Um, yeah, because you're around them so much, aren't um, you? Yeah. And like you, I, you know, I would have said it's not because you've said it, but I would have said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have uh, yeah, said yeah. because because. But that's not in your notes, is it? I haven't really got any notes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you kind of, well, yeah, because I there's things I do artistically that I would never have done. I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have been sitting in the bath drawing with a wax crayon on video. <laughs> but would you want to though? Either that's the thing. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, there you go. You see. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's great. So fun. It's a bad influence. <laughs> but I suppose if I really, if I want to go deep here. And I think everyone should think about this. Is perhaps the greatest influence in my life maybe me? Which is really str- it sounds awful, doesn't it? But what I mean by that is that if you want to do something in your life, only you can really, you know, look to yourself to make that happen, can't you? So you can kind of you can look at other people and you're influencing them to a certain degree, but actually only you you can make something happen. You can decide whether to do something or not. Nothing's going to happen if you don't make it happen, is it? So maybe... No, I think books as well. I mean, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of, and I didn't mention this actually, in the books thing for a, a kind of self-improvement. Everybody would be going, oh, <laughs> self, <laughs> self-improvement. Men are from Mars, women yeah. are from Venus. <laughs> self-improvement and also kind of geeky entrepreneurship books as well. I really like those. And I've read books in the past. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which isn't as cringeworthy if you haven't read it as it seems. But it's just say, basically saying that, say, your standard career is not as safe as you think. Whereas you think, if I'm in, employed in a job, I'm much safer than saying being self-employed. But actually, you're not because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, so and true. stuff like that. It just really influences the way you think mm. as much. I think as well, not maybe as much, but but a bit. So what about your favourite song then? These are very strange questions, John. They are. <laughs> they're, not, they're not arty. <laughs> but we knew that would happen. Anyone who listens to this, this podcast, this episode, will be going, what kind of podcast is this? This is not an art podcast. <laughs> it us- it's usually an art podcast, isn't it's it? U- yeah, just, let's, yeah, let's add that. It's this is a special. Art- this is a Christmas special. <laughs> so favourite song, I don't know about you, but I haven't really got one. It's another one of those ones where it's like the artist thing where you haven't really got one, but I I like different music. Um, But people always think it's a bit weird. I really love TV shows that have singing in them. Oh, 
that? Do you like musicals? <laughs> no, I don't like musicals. I don't like it when people sing the dialogue. No, I don't. I hate that. But I love things like Nashville. Do you remember, did you ever watch the... No. It was basically about country singers. It was fiction. Yeah. But you know, uh, um, and then I love Smash, which was about people trying out for Broadway show. Again, fiction. Yeah. Anything. Pitch Perfect films. Oh, no. <laughs> love them. Absolutely <laughs> love them. Don't um, tell me you like Glee. I loved Glee. No. <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, I shouldn't laugh too much at you because um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favourite ever films, which um, has lots of songs in it I love, because I'm like you, I've got such an eclectic, mi- eclectic mix of music that I love. There is no way I could say a song that I love the most. But Grease, I love that film, Grease. Oh, I really love it. It's just Do the you best. still love it? I still love that. It's yeah. my all-time favourite film is Greece. I just really love it. And I love John Travolta. And the way yeah, he, he wiggles nice. his hips. Oh, really like that. So yes, I love I love Greece. So yeah, I shouldn't really take the mix too much. But if you listen to my playlist, like say when I'm painting and I'll have my playlist on on Spotify or whatever, I'll you would never believe that one person had loaded all of the set all of that music because it's all so different. I've got uh have you ever heard of Leonard Cohen? Yeah. Oh, he's lovely. I love his voice. Actually, John, I think you would like him because he was a poet. He was a poet originally. I think he's dead now, actually. But he his lyrics are very deep and he's got this most incredible hypnotic voice. So I love listening to his stuff if I'm in the right mood. But then again, I love Pink Floyd. You know, I love Kate Bush. <laughs> I love, oh, I'll tell you what, one song I love, which always gets me up and dancing, is Nine to Five by Dolly Parton. I oh, love me that. me too. I love I that love as well. It. Yeah, I love it. And I love it at karaoke. I'll always have a go at that one. <laughs> the, have I told you about the Dolly, Dolly Parton song that you can slow down? It sounds brilliant. No. Jolene. It's, it, it, go search this, anybody who, want, uh, who wants to. Um it's basically Jolene by Dolly Parton, but if you go onto YouTube and search something like Dolly Parton Slowed Down, All right. you'll find that song. And it sounds like a guy singing it. Yeah. But it just, it's so cool. Oh, you really? wouldn't think it would sound good, but it sounds amazing. She's got a great voice. I love Dolly Parton. She has. And that's what they were saying. For someone to sound good when they're slowed down like that, it shows what a great voice they've got. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no favourite song. Just I do love music, though, so all sorts but of stuff. only took us several hundred words to tell you that. <laughs> 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 Ten words or less, John. Yeah. You, should, you should have known better. <laughs> so the next right. question he's asked is, what inspires you? Do you want to take this one first? Well, I haven't written anything down, so let me think while you, you answer. All right, then. So you just think you've me. got lots of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got two lines for this one, actually. So... <laughs> For me, it's creative people. Anyone who's creative, I love that, especially if they're doing something a bit innovative. And also entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who do interesting things and make things happen. It's like I'm totally, not envious, envious is not the word, in awe. Yeah. You know, for someone who can take this idea out of their head and make it into this thing that's real, it's just like that's absolutely amazing. Something new, something different fantastic so i was taking it more as well he says what inspires you rather than who so i kind of am looking at more along those lines and i i'm taking it as it he means art wise perhaps so, no idea hmm. so for me i can be inspired by the most strange things in the most at the most strange times but almost everything that makes me look twice is down to the lighting so ambient light specifically so maybe a candle if it's flickering you know against a glass or something that'll catch my eye i love that and reflections on water um i love there's there's a time of day that's my favorite time of day actually i've got two favorite times of days but i very rarely see one of them one of them is when just as the sun starts to come up but there's a there's a time in the afternoon, I think mainly sort of in September time, perhaps, where the sun's low in the sky, but it's just at that point where everything kind of goes golden. And that that I love that kind of light. 
anything like that. So it's basically an orange glowing light. So another thing as well is I, I've been inspired by the strangest things. So I remember going out of the back door once to take the dog for a walk and we've got a recycling, like a glass bucket outside our back door. And it just happened to be full of beer bottles. <laughs> Not all mine. <laughs> and it had been raining. It had been raining really, really hard. And all of these glass bottles, they would just have these blobs of water all over them. They're all bright green bottles. And where the back door light was on, we've got like a warm back door light above, and it was kind of reflecting on these little bubbles of light. And I just remember thinking, I've really got to paint that. I've never done I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but that, that's the kind of thing that inspires me, just something that catches my eye, but it's almost all light related, which is probably something you'd get by looking at my paintings, I suppose. Right, OK, so let's, uh, what have we got next? OK, you ask the next one then. Okay, so what makes you smile? What makes me smile? Lots of things make me smile. Um, I've got to say, a conversation with my five-year-old grandson normally has me in stitches because right, what I love about it is that I can have the most bonkers conversations with him with absolutely no judgment he does roll his eyes at me a lot, though. <laughs> does he? <laughs> Which is funny because he's five. And uh, he, know, he knows that I'm going to say stupid things. It's like he had this thing. I pick him up from school on a Wednesday. And he has this thing where every day, every time I pick him up, I say, what did you have for lunch today? And he's, he just doesn't answer. It's like he just will not answer me. And he'll just start a completely different conversation. And I'm like, no, what, what did you have for lunch? And he, he just doesn't answer me. So I find that like, oh, how can I get him to answer? Yeah. So I'll say things like, did you have metallic green mashed potato? No, Nanny, I didn't. Did you have fried dinosaur legs? No, Nanny, I did not have fried dinosaur legs. Did you have um, frozen cloud? And I'll, I'll just make up all this ridiculous stuff until in the end he rolls his eyes and he says, Nan, I had roast chicken. OK. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other day we were walking around the woods because I normally take him around the woods for a walk with the dog when he comes to mine. And um, somehow we were talking about bath time. And there was a time, <laughs> you might have seen this on Facebook, but me being the most responsible nan in the world, I had his, I did have hold of his hand, but he wanted to reach in to the pond in the woods. He was trying to do some fishing with a stick. So he leant forward. I was holding one hand and he leant forward, but he kind of stumbled forward a bit and he pulled me with him. He ended up actually face down in the pond <gasps> <laughs> and I ended up like knee deep in the water. It was so funny. So I pulled him out. He was laughing. I was laughing, but he was absolutely just covered <laughs> in muddy water. So I said, right, come on, because it wasn't very warm. I said, come on, let's get back to the, the back garden. I'm going to have to hose you down outside before I take you indoors. So I, <laughs> I got the out outside tap and the hose and I started hosing him down and I and it's funny I put it on Facebook but people actually thought that I was hosing this boy poor boy down with freezing cold water but what they didn't know was it's actually a mixer tap outside because of the dog Paul decided to put a warm water tap outside so I was showering him off with this um really lovely warm water before I could take him in because he was covered in all sorts you know but he was referring back to that day and he was sort of saying, oh, what would be the most fun bath? I said, well, next time we go to a car wash, what I'll do is we'll go to a car wash and then you can get out of the car and you can walk through the car wash. And, um, and he was you just know, you're teach at... you're teaching him very dangerous things here. You realise that, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> he knows that I'm he knows that I'm not being serious. He knows that I'm just, you know, talking yeah. absolute bonkers. This five-year-old boy is probably the only person that is on my level. <laughs> so, yeah, that makes me smile. What about you? What makes you smile? Well, actually, our KITC group makes me smile quite a lot. Kevin will be sitting there looking at our group stuff, and Kevin will go, what are you smiling at? It will be something someone has posted in there. Yeah. Especially, especially um, there's people like Angela... And Dorothy, they yeah. do crack me up, some of the things they say in there. And Deb is quite funny as well. Yeah, so uh, ukulele, I, think, I love Deb, Deb and her ukulele. Yeah. But that makes, yeah, that definitely makes me smile because Deb is just so entertaining, isn't she? Yeah, and she, usually, she quite often wears a woolly hat, which makes me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with a woolly hat, Sandra. 
Yeah. Oh, you're partial to a woolly yeah, hat. Yeah, I am you? partial yeah. to a woolly hat. Um, your texts make me smile quite often. And the weird, <laughs> when you send me a video you've just made, uh, yeah, they often make me smile because they're very weird quite often. <laughs> and then um, Kevin makes me smile a lot. You know, he does, and I can't even think, but he, he does stuff like the other day, and I go, I go, really? And he'll go, no. You know, just stupid things that men do. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I must say, Paul does make me laugh a lot. Yeah. And I bore easily, so I always, I always remind him he's very lucky I'm still with him because... 30 or 25 years and i'm still not bored that's unheard of for me (laughs) that's good isn't it but yeah he does he makes me laugh yeah yeah right so who would you like to who would you love to collaborate with alive or dead collaborate collaborate yeah (laughs) collaborate (laughs) alive or dead oh i have not got time to collaborate with anyone else because i'm already collaborating with you and uh i'm not sure anyone else would would, Put up with you. <laughs> yeah, would be yeah, would be on such the same level. So I'm not sure. Um, well, I'm waiting for you to get bored of me now. Now you've said how much yeah, you bore see, easily. Yeah, no, I do bore easily, but no, not so far. So far, I'm not bored at all. I do have a secret arty crush on Danny Gregory. It's so not maybe, very secret, Sandra. No, it's not, is it? No. It's not at all. Um, I don't know. Maybe something with him would be, with him would be cool, but can't see him wanting to collaborate with me he probably thinks i'm a lunatic <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I i think quite honestly i have got very little time left to collaborate with anyone else so i think if we collaborated um tara it would have to be the two of us collaborating with someone else wouldn't it yeah i mean i i've put pretty much the same thing i i don't particularly want to collaborate on creating a piece of art or do you no. know what I mean I don't want to because I've done stuff like I've done a book with someone before you know that mindfulness thingy mm. and, and to be honest unless you unless it works out really well with someone I just find that it, it doesn't work well for me no I think because I think it works well for us because if you say you're going to do something I know you'll do it and vice versa yeah but some people don't work to the same time frame you do, <laughs> if, you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so no, you might say, oh, let's make sure we've got this done by then. And then they haven't done it. And then, oh, it just doesn't work. No. So, But I think I'd like maybe us to collaborate in the future with other artists, maybe to create an event or something. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't quite know cool. what. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, so yeah. more of a, a KITC collaboration. Yeah, I think so. You know, I know. I know people in our group. They're doing loads of little collaborations, aren't they, on books? But I, I love say, that, and I love. Sometimes people are sort of posting a piece of art, and then someone else is writing a poem to go with it, which is fantastic. I love yeah. all that. I love watching other people collaborate. But yeah, I do think it's it has to be with the right person, doesn't it? For definitely, sure. yeah. I say I've been burned a few times like that. So, yeah, definitely, if you're going to do it, make sure you pick the right person or test it out with a little thing first. Definitely, yeah. So the next question he has is the best advice um, ever received. Do you want me to start or do you want to go? You go. Um, I can't think of like a real standout one big piece, but whenever I'm down about my art or my career... Kevin always tells me to focus on the amazing comments that we get. And he says, look how much you've helped people. Think about that and how much that's worth, you know, more than that you're making you know, good money doing X and Y and, you know, all that stuff. Just think how much not many people can say they've helped people in that way. That's so, so I, I true. Think... And then I've got another bit of advice I got from my dad on my 21st birthday. Right. Um, and... And it wasn't very good, actually. On my 21st birthday, I've probably told you before, friends and my boyfriend at the time decided it was a good idea to get me a kissogram, knowing full well I hate anything oh, like God. that. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know I you don't know even less. like... I, can ne- I can't imagine anyone liking that less than you. <laughs> exactly. You know I don't even like hugging people No, much. it's great. Yes. I make you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> um, but, you know, this the idea of this stranger, anyway, I wouldn't have it. 
they got there because I'm really not a good sport like that <laughs> and I would not have it because I hate things like that and I was quite pissed off because I kind of knew they were doing it but they wouldn't stop even though I told them to oh, no. um, and so my dad's advice was ignore them and go get pissed <laughs> Is that what you do to me sometimes? You just ignore me and go get kissed. <laughs> um, was it a kissogram or was it a stripogram? It was a kissogram. Oh, stripogram, kissogram. Yeah, oh, no. a guy, so, guy who'd, who'd stripped down to his little pants. and I, I Oh, he do didn't it. take those off, did he? Well, my friend's mum actually was at my party because she was kind of friends with all of us as well. Yeah. And she loves stuff like that. She goes, oh. I'll do it, I'll do it. Oh, what, she'll strip? Oh, no, no, she'll, she'll, she'll have to be... piss a gram. Oh, I see. Oh, God, <coughs> just no, I die. Like, I just hate, I, I really, you'd do it, though, because I can imagine you go along with it. But... No, uh, no uh, do you know what? It, that sort of thing does not do it for me at all. No, well, look, people do it. It's not actually for the person, is it? It's basically to ridicule the, the person, isn't, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. entertainment. It's, it's like, yeah, no, <laughs> I really no. don't, I really don't want anyone waggling their bits in my face no, thank you very much exactly no but yeah so yeah that's my dad's <laughs> advice <laughs> i think the best art advice i've ever been given so i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of go on to art um is not to be afraid of the dark and by dark i don't mean dark as in switching the lights out i mean t- dark tones so the darker you paint your darks, then the lighter your lights will appear. And I remember when I very start, first started painting and I was using watercolours and watercolours have got a reputation of being a bit wishy-washy, haven't they? Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because people don't go in dark enough. Um, and with watercolour, it actually dries paler, doesn't it, as it's drying? And But... But to go into the darkest areas with loads and loads of pigment and hardly any water because that just makes the rest of it sing out. And I've lived by that advice with my paintings. I paint a lot of contrast between light and dark. And one thing as well I'd say is if ever you're sort of looking at your painting and thinking there's something I can't put my finger on it, it's not you know what what's wrong with it? It seems weak. What what is it? If you um, take a photograph of it and then put it up on your computer and then switch it from colour to black and white. If the tones are not not very different and it's pretty much an even tone most of the way across the canvas or you've just got, you know, a few lights and darks, that's probably why. You want to see really, really dark areas, you want to see a pattern of dark areas and you want to see a pattern of really, really light areas and then some in between. So if it doesn't work in black and white, it will not be working in colour. So that's the best advice I've ever had art-wise because it changed my painting, I think. It changed, my paintings changed after that. But um, other than that, best advice ever given or received... Oh, stay well away from that Tara Ross school. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't listen to that, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't know, really. I, I was kind of thinking along the arty line, so I'll stick with yeah. that. Okay. So, best and advice... that was nearly ten words or less. No, it wasn't. Nowhere near. Anyway, <laughs> best advice for others. Do you want to go? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait for inspiration, because it might never come. Don't wait for the planets to align because they never, ever will. If you want something, do it now. Um, Life can be very short. So don't be one of these people that think, I wish I had. Even if, you know, you do it and you only do it for a week, at least you've done it and you've done some of it. Just, Just do it. Do it now. Well, I'd say never stop learning new things. Yeah. Because for me... I get such a buzz out of learning something new. Um, so, yeah, definitely do that. Don't think you can't learn something new because you're a certain age. Rubbish. You can learn something new any age. And then try and remember all the good things that people say about you and your work and not let the bad criticism outweigh it because we do tend to focus on the bad things. So you might have 10 people say how much they like something. One person says how bad and you'll dwell on the bad thing. So try not to. Yeah, definitely. So I've got something else I've just thought okay. of. Another bit of um, advice I would have for other people, art-wise, is, um, and I've said this a hundred million times before, but don't be afraid to be bad because you have to be bad before you can get good. And you don't have to share it anyway, do you, if you don't want to? No. And you're going to be, 
you know, you're going to start off not being able to do it very well. You're going to start off that way. And just don't be afraid to be that way. It's, it's how everyone starts. So I think we're finding that a little bit with, um, like, when we go out sketching. Yeah. And there's good days and bad days, isn't there? I mean, yeah. You're always going to have days as well where you're not, you know, happy with what you've done, but you just have to get past those. those and it's because you've sw- we've switched to something that we don't do enough almost yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Right, next one. We've got Janelle... I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Janelle Tahoon. And she says, if you had a magic wand to wave and instantly master a medium that you shy away from, what would it be? Okay. You want me to answer that? Yep, go for it. I don't really shy away from any particular medium. I just have mediums that I don't enjoy using. So, for instance, gouache or however you say it. <laughs> we have this conversation so often, I still don't know how to say gouache. Um, I just don't like gouache <laughs> and if, if I don't like them anyway then I'm not bothered about mastering them so yeah there's nothing I won't try but to be honest I just love oils and that's what I'm sticking with at the moment so is there any medium that you see that other people do though and you say think okay forget about whether you like applying it or not mm. but you see it and you think oh I wish I could instantly just paint like that or whatever I would like to be able to sculpt. All right. Yeah. So clay, you know, where you make yeah. figures and things. I know what sculpting is. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to do that. So I, I can paint, but, you know, you see some people when they've got these other things they can do, they can carve and they can make make stuff, make actual objects out, you know, with a hammer and yeah. a chisel or a, or some clay. I would, yeah... I, if I could wave a magic wand, I'd like to be able to sculpt or, or carve or something like that, maybe. Well, it's like Leela Pappenberg stuff, who's in our group. She makes those lovely hedgehogs and things, doesn't she? Have you seen her stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. It's great. And I, sometimes, like with our prompts um, and our challenges, you get the odd person that doesn't actually do a drawing. They'll make something. They'll make a little, um, I don't know plasticine animal or something it's yeah. really cute <laughs> yeah so so me again i don't shy away from things so much because i'm worried about mastering them it's more like you that i don't like them um i would probably say acrylic paints but really what i want is a magic wand to clear them up and get them out again and stuff like that i don't <laughs> i don't mind learning the rest the normal way i just want a clearer upper and a Oh, I and, love that. And yeah. someone who could... I need a full body suit, including gloves, but it's easy to have a wee out of still, um, <laughs> that, that you can, you know, you can just do your painting and then somebody cleans that for you. Yeah, like a forensic detective suit. Yeah, and you don't get any on your hands Because oils are really messy, I must say, and I'm terrible with mine. I mean, quite often I'm doing an oil painting, I realise I've got where I've got oil... My, my brush has rolled across my palette or something there's oil paint all over the handle then it's all over my hands and it's yeah. oh it's horrible stuff really to use like that uh, it's a pain in the bum although baby wipes work really quite well actually as, a, as an emergency just to wipe a handle and wipe your hands but you've got a bit of a yeah. thing about those haven't you well, baby, baby wipes, wipes yeah. slight obsession <laughs> yeah, I mean, i've never fancied oils when purely because there's nothing that appeals to me right i mean i love what you do but yeah, the yeah. idea of actually <laughs> the idea of actually painting with yeah. them it's like there's nothing remotely that appeals to me no they're too no, because, slow because you love the the kind of immediacy of something yes. don't you yeah. and you know something done in one sitting don't you yeah i do yeah and i don't think that i mean people do do one sittings and those don't they but yeah i don't think it's perhaps ideal for that no i mean a la prima they call it don't they we just do one and and i'll tell you what some people get some quite well very realistic paintings like eight by eights done in a in a couple of hours don't they it's incredible sometimes you watch on the telly don't you that um portrait art of the year and what somebody can achieve in just four hours with oils is quite incredible really not in the yeah, way i, I do always, it that's for sure i always wonder because they dry really slowly don't they Mm. How the heck, if you were doing it in one sitting, would you get so you could actually put the detail in? Because everything would be still sloppy, wouldn't it, underneath? Um, well, I don't, that's the point, though. I don't think they do do a huge amount of detail, do they? Mostly it is 
quite loose, loose. kind of hair, right? Okay. And I do think some of them probably do the underpainting with the acrylics first, let that uh, dry, and then go over in oils. Right. That's probably a lot of people do that. So. Okay, yeah. so the next one we've got is Nick Tate West, and she says, "What made you guys decide to do a podcast together?" Hmm. Well. I co-hosted a few of your old podcast episodes, didn't I, when you had um, the Idea Medic? Yeah, which I, I've taken down now, actually. Yeah, you... Um, I think you interviewed me on that pod. It seems so long ago now, doesn't it? You interviewed it me on your old podcast. And we we hit it off. And I think after we stopped recording, we carried on chatting, didn't we? And we were kind of kept in contact by email and i ended up actually co-hosting a few episodes with you didn't i and, and yeah. you re- you really enjoyed it because you used to get so nervous with interviews and interviewing people and, and it was nice for you to just have um like a, an episode where you were just chatting to, to someone rather than interviewing someone and yeah, and I've, I think as well, when, when I first interviewed you, I think you were really, I thought you were really good on it. And I think I said to you, why don't you have your own podcast, didn't I? And you said, no, but I would consider co-hosting one. Yeah, co-host- I, think, I think the words I actually used was, no way would yeah. I ever <laughs> do that. Oh my God, no. I, I, I said, I can imagine, I can see why people can do it with someone else, but there's no way I'd ever want my own podcast. I couldn't do what you do. And at that point, I would never, ever have dreamed of doing a solo episode. So I would never have sat there on my own just chatting about stuff. And to be honest, I would never even have thought about co-hosting and just talking about a topic. No. Because I wouldn't have thought we'd have enough to say, which proved totally <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah, so so we kind of, I think we, well, you really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed it. And then because we became friends anyway, we were talking about... Well, I suppose kicking the creatives came about, didn't it? We started talking about well, we were basically challenging each other yeah. for one of your episodes. I think it was, wasn't it? We were challenging, yeah. make, doing little challenges for each other, and you know, um, one of them involved a lot of um, drinking <laughs> <laughs> and creating, and um, it, it was just really, really good fun. And then our idea came out of it, kicking the creatives, and eventually it made sense to actually start our own podcast to go with kicking the creatives directly rather than you know yeah it made sense to start it fresh and it was ours rather than being a podcast that i'd started and we'd kind of tried to morph into something else wasn't Mm. it yeah so yeah that's that's how it all started and i think we had the idea that it wouldn't just be a podcast it was going to be this group where challenges would take place so like the podcast they're all supplement to each other weren't they yeah definitely yeah. and i think we spent probably a couple of months setting up the website didn't we, we you mm. were writing a lot of the challenges while i was doing a lot of the designing the site and yeah putting stuff up and so yeah, we well, that, that we made a good team, didn't we? Because you you're good at sort of you were really good at that side of things. Whereas I I was you know I I'm not a graphic designer, do you know what I mean? And I was good at writing, so I would yeah you know be it made sense that I do that side of things. So and Jane Sharkey, she has a kind of similar question, but she says, "How do you create your videos slash podcasts?" Boring question, but super useful. She says, "I don't think it's a boring question." No. So shall I do the videos and you yeah. chip in and then you do the podcast? Okay. Okay, so videos, we basically, either of us will have an idea, um, <laughs> a variant nuttiness, <laughs> um, and then we'll say to the other one, we might just say, I'll say, oh, can you do this type of drawing? Or you might say, oh, can you do this type of drawing? And then we say, yes. So then whoever's had the idea will probably script it out, what each of us is going to say, and then we then go in and edit it so if i think of a better idea for a bit of yours or vice versa we change it um then we video it so we've both got the same camera and little setups with lights and everything haven't we yeah so we'll then do our little bit but we'll quite often add to it or change it a bit as long as we know it will fit with what the other person's gonna say yeah. we know we're fine so so for example i was not expecting when we did scripted the one that was about continuous line drawing where i draw a continuous line drawing horse um 
I, I think I just said, oh, Sandra demonstrates how doing a continuous line drawing could be done with like a piece of string or a shoelace. And so she's supposed to smell the shoe. And so, ugh, you know, and then get the shoelace out and do a continuous line drawing like that. But what actually came back to me <laughs> was she'd done that bit, but then she'd stuck... I'm saying she because I'm talking to them. She'd <laughs> stuck the shoelace all around her face with sellotape. I'm like, I just get these back and I just like cry <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so this video, thing, oh my God, that's amazing. And then, um, so then, so you shoot your bits, I shoot my bits and then I'll edit them together um, with a bit of software called Adobe Premiere. There are loads of free ones though. If you do want a free one, I think there's something called something like DaVinci something or other. So Google free video software DaVinci and you'll find something that I think is supposed to be really high end, but free. And yeah, so we edit them together and that's it. We put them up. Is that DaVinci an app? It's, yeah, but it's a basically for, I think you can get it Mac and PC. Oh, I know. It's DaVinci Resolve, I think it's called. Mm. For Mac or PC, I believe. Mm. That's supposed to be really good. But I say I use, because I've got the Adobe package, I use Adobe Premiere. So, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, and with our podcasting, what happens is one of us will have an idea. Um, we tend to write, we have like a document, don't we? We both post ideas to, and we kind of refer to that sometimes, think, oh, what are we going to talk about next time? And I'll have a look. And basically, it's a similar thing. We'll we'll sort of both agree on what, what we want to talk about next. And so I will usually um, open up a document and invite Tara to add bullet points to that document of the thing she'd like to talk about and then what i'll do is i'll lay it out in some kind of an, an order um and that's really it it's kind of like a skeletal well tara's going to talk about that i'll talk about this i'll men- you know i'll mention this blah 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 and then what happens is when we're both happy with that skeleton episode we'll both print off our own version and just add notes as we want to really and then we sort of tend to well it's wednesday wednesday mornings eight o'clock we get on our computers and record and then basically i'll download those audios and then i'll edit that my end because tara edits all the videos so i i tend to edit the podcasts and uh yeah that's you, it really you use garage band don't you i, so you, I just use garage band yeah it works really well for me so then when you've you, you've edited it you send that to me, don't you? Yeah, and, and then, then after after that, I have no idea what happens because then Tara does the rest. <laughs> yeah, so you send the podcast to me, then I'll tag it, which is basically just put extra information on it. I'll upload it, write the podcast notes. I'll generally take a lot from what we've written in our skeleton notes, uh, create the images. I'll create take little bits of audio snippets from there to make just to put on social media, make a few extra graphics, and then I'll schedule that all in a social media app. Yeah. So, easy peasy. Easy peasy. (laughs) Actually, it's not always easy peasy when Tara and I waffle on so much and it was at this point of the editing that I decided we needed to spread this episode over too because we'd gone over by a whole hour. So, the next half of the episode will be aired on the 24th of December and then after that, the podcast will return to its normal style on the 6th of January. Back soon. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. <laughs>